is not vain, that morn shall tearless be, a cross that lifted up my head. I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay in dust life's glory dead, and from the ground their blossoms red. Life shall endless be. how we're going to do this today. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to play this guitar, and y'all are going to sing louder than you normally do so that you don't have to hear me play this here guitar, <laughs> all right? That's how we're going to do this, church. <laughs> um, this is the perfect. Church of Decatur, Disciple of Christ, is an open and affirming congregation. We welcome everyone into full participation in the life and literature of the church. Inspired and informed by God's love, mercy, and justice, we are purposefully involved in the healing and helping of our community and our world. We cover greater community to nurture as a spirit of love and service to neighbors, honor one another's differences, and fellowship in the breaking of the bread, actively striving to honor each other's race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, or mental ability, family configuration, political affiliation, economic circumstance, our or theological perspective, we truly welcome all. And I'd like to speak a little yes on that. If you read this,
to look at myself sincerely, truthfully, and honestly, and question myself if you really believe it. Not only do you believe it, do you practice it? Yes. That was a spiritual thing to me. <laughs>
give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. For God's love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the one who rules heaven and earth. For God's mercy endures forever. Who alone does great wonders? For God's strength endures forever. Who comforts the sorrowing and rescues the perishing? For God's grace endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Now please join in the unison prayer of invocation. God of constancy, we give thanks for your covenant with us by the life of your Son and the work of your Spirit. Give us space to reflect time and to learn confidence to work for a juster, fairer time for the whole world and unite within your love. into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm suddenly arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? You are very faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a good calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. So 
as Ms. Lilly suggested, and I like that suggestion, is that we take a moment and read the joys and concerns of the church and community. There are lots of birthdays this month, as she mentioned. Uh, we need to lift in prayer Reverend Daniel Brower, our associate pastor, as she is recovering from COVID. She also asks for prayers for her roommate, Blessing Bathagon. Um, of course, PJ has offered up her brother, Ron, who passed away recently in Indonesia. Let's all keep PJ and her partner, Jenny, in our prayers. Pat Olive, the Thanksgiving for all of our prayers. Allison Woolridge requests prayers for her friend, Christina Sebastian, who is continuing to battle with cervical cancer. Reverend Pamela Owens requests prayer for her lifelong friend, Donna Rose, Terminally ill. Healing prayers for Mary Ellen Merrill, who is currently at a physical rehab facility. Mary Frances Early requests prayers for continued treatments on her eyes. Healing prayers continue for Johnny Lee and Nancy Sheely. Please keep Ann Crocker, her friends, and family in your prayers. Also, please keep Reverend Betty Brewer Calvert, Katie Brewer Calvert, Henry Brewer Calvert, and Anna Brewer Calvert in your thoughts and your prayers, as well as the extended Brewer slash Calvert clan. We lift them up. So join me now in prayer. Coming before God with our needs, with our wants, with our thanksgivings, and just with our presence. Pray with me. Holy and loving God. We come before you this morning with hearts containing so many prayers, so many thoughts, so many needs, so many celebrations. Our hearts come to you frequently bursting with news. We thank you, God, that you know. You know everything that is within our hearts in our minds and in the way we live our lives the way we may listen to you give us direction for our lives and also the ways in which we might turn away from you when we turn away from you oh God please forgive us please forgive us and nudge us gently to turn around and see you in all your glory waiting there for us waiting there for us and Lord we bring great thanksgiving for your son Jesus Christ who came to earth to teach us Teach us deeply to teach us how to love you as he loves you. Help us be guided by the words that Jesus shared with us throughout his life here on earth. Sometimes that is not easy. Sometimes we choose not to. And again, 
Lord, we ask forgiveness. Thank you, God, the world over for your presence with all those who are hurting, who are terrified, who are waiting waiting whether it is in joy or misery. We know that, God, you are with them. You send your Holy Spirit to us to accompany us on our travels, whether they were inward travels or outward travels. The Holy Spirit goes before us, walks beside us, hovers above and below and behind us. We are encompassed in your love. And we come before you in great thanksgiving. Hear us now, Lord, as we offer to you the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
morning scriptures are two favorites of mine. Thank you, Lily. Psalm 42 became a favorite of mine when I was about 12 years old and read verses 7 and 8, which in my translation is the one that I always think of. Verse 7 says, deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataract. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Now, I don't know if I knew what cataracts were, <laughs> other than the things in my grandparents' eyes that made them not be able to see. And it took me a few years of living to realize what life's cataracts were and how they could toss you about. And how grateful I was that in the, the darkness of being tossed about and in the darkness of the night in my bedroom, God would come to me and reassure me that he had me. That he wasn't going to let anything happen to me. No matter the noise in my head and my heart or in the house around me. By the time I was 12, I had already experienced seven years of troubled waters, of calling upon the Lord in the middle of the night, times of lament. Anybody here familiar with living through times of lament? Psalm 42 is one of the lament psalms. Psalms which give voice to the deepest needs and fears of God's people, as well as their questioning God's intentions and timing. Lord, forgive me. How often do I live that out? Questioning. God's intentions, <laughs> when, which, which you, when you think about that, yeah, no, it's like that's kind of a silly thing to do. So anyone else here live through that sort of thing? Yes. Right, yes. right, yes. okay. So troubled waters. Today's story about Matt, from Matthew has been a favorite of mine since early vacation Bible school days. <laughs> There was a picture, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but the picture was really old when I was really young, okay? And it was this darkened canvas, probably a reproduction, we're not kidding here. And the boat was there with its bow pitched high, high out of the water. And 
so you could see the disciples, right, going, and they were all reaching toward Jesus. And the water was coming into the boat. That picture scared stuff out of them. <laughs> the disciples looked terrified. Reaching for Jesus, who was sleeping so peacefully in the back. I can feel the fear and the hope, right? Wrestling within each disciple. They knew Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, was sleeping in the bow. And they were questioning why he wasn't awake fixing the situation, basically. So, <sighs> when Jesus awoke... Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Can you imagine having someone ask you that question in a similar situation? Why are you afraid? This section in Matthew is a secret of stories where Jesus is teaching about the cost of discipleship. The teaching of Jesus in this particular story is one of reassurance of Jesus telling his disciples that they can trust in Jesus and not be afraid. If you notice, Jesus does this teaching before calming the sea. Have you ever wondered why? Troubled waters. One of my favorite theologians and writers, he writes a book about every month, uh, is Walter Brueggemann. <laughs> I love the man. And we correspond on email. I'm just like, ah! Anyway, it is kind of cor like corresponding with God. I'll just say that and, and leave it. In a class on Isaiah that I was fortunate to take, Brueggemann introduced us to the process of orientation. Everything's fine, Danny. Disorientation. What? Right? The bow and the air. And then reorientation. Everything settles down. So, you know, you, you want to know what m my opinion is of the most valuable part of that procession is? Anybody? Disorientation. <laughs> I surprised you there. <laughs> Because that's the troubled waters. Though rough and difficult to navigate, they bring us to a new perspective, a way of seeing which has been clarified and brightened by moving through those troubled waters. Brueggemann was adamant, and when Walter Brueggemann gets adamant, he stops, and he stares all the way across the classroom. And when you've been stared at by Walter Brueggemann, you know. And he was adamant in that moving forward in our lives, we were not to waste the work accomplished in that time of disorientation. By rushing into reorientation, hoping everything was going to be the same as when we were previously oriented, yeah. I believe that's why Jesus calmed the disciples before he calmed the sea. 
By doing so, Jesus came alongside the disciples in the midst of the disorientation. He offered the disciples reassurance and expanded perspective. A different way of looking at Jesus. Yes. Yet also a different way of looking at themselves and their ministry alongside Jesus as well as apart from him. He was inviting them in to a time of reorientation. Troubled waters. Anyone here ever been river rafting and hit some rapids? We'll have to get together after service and trade stories on that. I did not do well. Um, there is a certain rhythm to rafting down a significant river. There are calm waters. Then at some point, there are some crazy rough waters. And then thankfully, more calm waters. Keeping with our orientation, disorientation, reorientation idea, when we put in at the beginning of a river, River trip, we don't usually put in where the river is rough, right? Okay. Especially not if it's going to be a long trip. The waters are easily navigable. We get the hang of things, of working together as a team, so that when the waters turn rough, you're capable of hanging in there and pushing through. When we at last reach another stretch of easily navigable waters, we make our way through these waters with a new perspective for what might be coming around the bend. We have gained confidence in our ability to do what needs to be done regardless of whether the waters are troubled or smooth. We successfully moved through the challenges of a time of disorientation and enjoyed the new perspective that time brought us as we became reoriented. Troubled Everyone we encounter in our lives, everyone, moves through troubled waters at times. What are we ready to do for those we meet who find themselves in troubled waters? What are we ready to do for those we meet who find themselves in troubled waters. Jesus was teaching his disciples to calm themselves and so calm those troubled waters. If you've ever noticed, when we do stop to help someone, the situation is mostly easily handled when we are calm. Our calmness communicates itself to the person we're trying to help. So again, how do we, as part of the body of Christ, reach out to those moving through troubled waters and help them? First, calm themselves and then find calm in their troubled waters. We are called to find it within our faith to offer reassurance, encouragement, and a new perspective. Perhaps in some cases even a shared lament. The Psalms are a resource for every single emotion humanity experiences. You could spend the rest of your lifetime reading and rereading the Psalms. 
Psalm 42 is a beautiful example of a call and response for me. In verse 2, the psalmist writes, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? Then, in verse 4, the psalmist remembers being in a procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving. So immediately following, in verse 5, the psalmist asks his own soul, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Through the psalmist's own faith, there is encouragement found. Who gives us our faith? Yeah, this is a midterm test. Who gives <laughs> us <laughs> Our faith. God, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> yes, God. Are you seeing the kind of circle we're getting going here? I kind of envision a lasso, but I don't think that's where we're going. Do you hear how we might offer someone else moving through troubled waters a reoriented perspective? Perhaps through the beautiful laments within Psalm 42, full of humanity and faith, disquiet and hope, we can find the new perspective we are being offered, the encouragement which has fed, been fed by the ability to lament. The new perspective that the disciples were being offered by Jesus when he reassured them before calming the stormy sea. One last thought about troubled waters. Y'all know who Bobby McFerrin is? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He has an album out there called Spirit, You All. And he sings a song titled Way. And I could sing better and I could hold the tune better, I would sing it. The lyrics reference the waters of baptism. And McFerrin sings, God's gonna trouble the water. God's gonna trouble the water. I think I'm seeing some cataracts. God's going to trouble the water. I remember the waters of my baptism in that sanctuary. I was, ba I was one of three adults to be baptized that day. Nathan Brown, most of you will know, who's very tall. Me, not nearly as tall as Nathan. And then Hanifa, I remember her last name. But she was a tiny little woman. Tiny. All right? So I'm in I'm number two, so Nathan goes down in there, and I think James actually almost falls over as yeah. he is dipping <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> so up comes Nathan. He finishes, you know, the whole baptism, and Nathan climbs up the steps to the other side and turns around and he's looking at me. Okay? Now Nathan is dripping. Just dripping water. Water is running down him, right? And it's very, I don't know what to say. It, it, it was a sight to behold. And when I came up out, well, I took my last look at the waters before I walked down in there, and there was a stirring of the water. And I thought, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So I go down, 
James, you know, does his thing, and I come up, and there is Nathan standing in the still dripping water, standing in his white robe, like this. <laughs> And I said, and I don't know if the congregation heard me or not, but I said, Jesus. <laughs> In a moment of spiritual ecstasy, I said, Jesus, because there he was. <laughs> and so I managed, you know, to pull myself up out of the baptistry. Nathan helped me, right? You know, we're standing up there. Then little Hanifa comes who could, you know, could barely see over. The, the baptistry wall, right? She gets baptized, and we we were helping her because she is weighed down by that you know baptismal robe. So we get up there, and we're hugging, we're kind of laughing, and so James says, and I don't think he realizes the mic is still hot, but he says, "Hang on, I want some of that." <laughs> <laughs> and so he comes up, and we're doing this, you know big group hug, and as he came up, which was his thing to do, he grabbed the plug, right, for the baptistry. Something was supposed to be going on out in in the sanctuary. The service, you know, had just kept going. I don't know what it was, but somehow something wasn't going on. So it was very quiet. And so the sanctuary, <laughs> the sanctuary heard, hang on, I want some of that. And then... <laughs> God, I miss James for a So, do you remember your baptism? It's wonderful because I can think back and I'm there. I'm there. Were you baptized like in a, in a sanctuary, in a baptistry, maybe in a lake or a river? Think about Jesus being baptized in the River Jordan, perhaps the ocean if you live close to the ocean, or even a pool. I remember will always remember that the waters of my baptism were stirred up. God had truly troubled the waters. Perhaps there is something there for each of us to consider when we think about what God is calling us to do as the body of Christ. Are we stirred up? the Holy Spirit in this congregation I think it's kind of sleeping right now but the Holy Spirit is here we need to wake up are we reassured that Jesus is with us in that boat in all the different boats of our lives individually congregationally and I want you to hold on to that and be calm we are not alone in anything we are asked called or expected to do in Jesus' name it is with the reassurance of Jesus' presence that we are able to push through the troubled waters of life, including the fears and doubts which sometimes assail us. Our faith can remind us that Jesus is with us in all of our troubled waters and will wade into those waters with us on behalf of the other.
Not hurting the preacher. We gotta get the spirit moving. <laughs> so join with us as we sing this one. How great thou art.
teacher told it to me, and she would say, use expression there, Olivia, use expression there. And as I grew old, I began to understand how powerful God was. And he just stepped out there and said, let there be light. And there was light. God brings us understanding in the strangest times. say you don't have to pay for communion. But you are welcome to make your contributions in the service for God. It could be check, cash, money. Or it could be online. We take it out. And we appreciate it because God's work is being done in this place. And you can see the website on the back of your program there. Where you may make your contribution online. And at the same time, our communion is open to everyone. I grew up thinking that I was told you could get communion as a little girl or child. You had to make your commitment first before you could take communion. And then I learned in some churches, if you were a member, you couldn't have it at all. I went to a funeral and they gave communion and they said, if you are not this, you may not take communion. But you can come over here and we'll pray for you. I said, what? <laughs> I've been walking this trail a long time and they're telling me because I don't belong to this group, I cannot take communion. I said, I want your prayer. <laughs> and I left that church. I was really and when I learned about this church, this denomination, and you had communion every Sunday, I was just so excited because the Baptist church don't get much more. First Sunday, if you don't come, you don't get it till next month. But that's enjoyable now that I can, I feel good about being here. So I'm going to give you this too. <laughs> there is no right other than what's in the heart. Yes. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you look down upon us today and see our need for nourishment. We ask that you bless this cup juice that reminds us of Christ's blood and this loaf of bread which reminds us of his broken body all of which were given to us we come forth to this table in great thanksgiving Please accept our thanks and deeply, deeply bless us. Amen. For I received from the Lord to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this, this is my body, body which, which is, is for you, you. do, do this, this in remembrance of me and in the same way also after the cup after supper 
saying, It's this house, it's a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We're going to be taking communion by intention. And we have gluten-free cups um, available if you need that. We have um, bread and a cup. So come as you are ready.
take the hope that we have in Christ out into the world. Show the world our faith in Christ's presence with us through all our troubled waters. And be blessed by the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God's gonna trouble the world.